Good evening. My name is uh, Mr. Cohen. I'm the uh, health and one of the health and phys ed teachers here at Mates. My name is Melissa Wollian. I am the other health and phys ed, phys ed teacher here at Mates. And uh, for the most part, I am going to have the freshmen in the spring and the juniors in the fall. And I will have the sophomores in the fall and the seniors in the spring. Um, so phys ed at Mates is very different than traditional phys ed program. Um, for one, uh, the students have to have a lot of flexibility. Um, we don't always know what we're doing beforehand. We don't necessarily do units of activities. Um, sometimes, um, you know, COVID dependent, that we'll have a, a bus that we can take off premises. Um, sometimes we'll do a trash cleanup. Sometimes it's a reward. We walk uh, to Wawa, pick up trash, and they go in to get a treat. Um, we do do some traditional games. We have some fields that we can use down at Southern Regional, um, but we don't have a proper gymnasium per se. Uh, we do have a fitness room that the students will be able to use each day. We have an area out back um, where we set up volleyball court, basketball court, um, and we, you know, we have the cafeteria where we can do yoga and some indoor games as well. Yeah, and outdoors we have games like uh, kind of backyard games. We have bocce ball, we have lacrosse, we have um, spike ball. So there's a variety of activity to keep them busy. Um, also, we have a sort of a track around the school sidewalk that we allow them to walk and about four laps around is a mile. So we do try to keep them busy. We try to keep them active and most importantly in a good head space and a good physical space. Yep. Um, so, you know, sometimes they'll be playing the uh, super traditional games and sometimes they'll be doing uh, some different activities. Uh, the students don't have to change. Uh, we do have a locker room. They are given the opportunity to change if they would like. Um, if a student wears sneakers and shorts and a t-shirt to school, they don't necessarily have to change. They may want to, depending upon the activity. If we're outside running around sweating and they have block one, they might, may want to change so they're not in those sweaty clothes the rest of the day. But what we do ask is that you wear something that uh, what your outfit is not going to hinder your ability. Uh, you know, super skinny jeans on yoga day might not be the best option. Um, you know, wearing uh, jewelry, fancy watches on a day we're playing volleyball is probably not a good idea. Um, so as long as what they're wearing uh, is not affecting um, their play, then we're pretty much okay with it. If they do choose to change, we're only allowing three students in the locker room at a time this year, just for COVID spacing. Um, and, or there's a bathroom in the hallway that three people can use at a time. Um, but again, don't have to change. We have shelves and lockers to store the stuff if they do change. And we ask that they keep their valuables in their, uh, their school locker because the locks and the, the lockers in the locker room don't lock. Yes. And just to reiterate what Mr. Cohen said, um, especially, you know, the girls, I know a lot of them like to wear the crop tops and all that stuff. I know it's in, in style, but for PE and like when we go off campus, just try to be a little cognizant of, you know, where you are and who you're representing because, um, you know, some of it can be a hindrance to the dress code. And then even if you're playing a game, you know, we don't want to like a super short shirt and then like you're reaching up to grab a ball and, and you know, we have like an unfortunate situation. So in those type of circumstances, we appreciate the cooperation. Um, nurses notes, if you happen to be injured, you know, you play a sport or, you know, you just have a common accident, make sure that you're either bringing in a note written by a parent or a doctor's note and we'll send that to the nurse and then, you know, you'll be asked to stay out however the recommended amount of time either your doctor recommend or your parent has asked. And if a student, if a doctor writes a note that a student is out for three weeks and they get better in two, uh, we can't necessarily say they can return to phys ed, but if they get a note uh, faxed to school from the doctor saying they can return, then that's okay. Um, but if a student is out of phys ed, they're out of phys ed for all activities. They can't pick and choose what they can do. Um, you know, and, and a note from a doctor or a parent can go straight to the nurse's office in the, office in the morning. She's going to put it on file and then give us uh, a copy of it for our records. Um, if a student is forced to be home um, for the 10 day COVID um, quarantine, quarantine uh, if it was, uh, if they're sick, they're obviously not going to be asked to do physical activities. They're going to do have some type of uh, writing assignment if they can. Um, if they've just because of an exposure and they're not feeling sick, they'll be doing, um, we'll have a link to a 30-day uh, a home workout, not that they'll be home for 30 days necessarily, but a 30-day home workout that doesn't require any equipment, um, just so they can, they're not falling behind um, with their, 
you know, physical education. Um, and on that note too, we will be having Google Classroom just as, because it's so much easier to communicate. So we'll have you sign up for a classroom and we'll likely also use it for some health components as well to post assignments, even um, doing your fitness charts. We're going to have you use the equipment this year. Obviously last year we couldn't, um, but this year we, now we know that wiping down the surfaces, washing your hands, obviously wearing your masks um, while you work out and you know just kind of getting you back into that routine not being as restrictive as we had to be last year and the students will not have to wear masks outside if we're doing any activity outside so especially while the weather's nice we're going to encourage students to be outside um, which brings us to the next uh, portion uh, health uh, i'll be teaching junior health miss willie owen will have sophomore health um, we push those off later into the fall so that we're, you know, when the weather's not so nice and we're forced to be inside, that's when we uh, get our health out of the way. Um, junior health is something called financial literacy, which is uh, something that every student in the state of New Jersey has to pass. I think you'll appreciate that your kids start to learn about credit cards, car loans, different types of insurance, um, but every student has to take that, so that's gonna be a uh, part of the junior health. Uh, in addition, what we're gonna cover in junior health is nutrition, uh, personal health, uh, cancer and Lyme disease awareness, uh, and consumer and community health. So yeah, you know, with all the social media advertising that the kids are seeing today, we make the, sure that they're making proper decisions in their, their purchases. Uh, sophomore health is? Sophomore health is primarily driver's education and uh, additional components with driver's education are organ donation, tobacco, alcohol, and drugs, and mental and emotional health. Um, lots of big decisions, lots of new responsibilities with that. Um, so that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, you are certainly welcome to uh, send us an email or um, call our extensions, which uh, the students will get uh, a bit of a syllabus and a good way to contact us um, early in the year. Uh, if you have any questions about what's going to be being taught in health, any sensitive topics, you're certainly welcome to, to reach out um, about that. Um, and we are looking forward to a wonderful year and lots of activity, lots of fun things to do, kind of a release from the other intense classes that the students take here. Yes, likewise. And, and also we should probably add, in case this winds up getting pushed to a virtual spring as well um, for back to school night, I'll add that for senior health, the most important component we cover is CPR um, and human relationships and growth and development and also safety and environmental health will be th put in there as well but since our the nature of our school primarily deals with that we won't be covering as in-depth topics as the other science courses and uh, freshman health in the spring is mostly boat safety we're one of the only stool schools in the state that all the students will have the opportunity to get a boating license we figure since it's a marine science school the school has a boat that we do research on it's good that the students get their boating license um, and uh, some other topics that we cover, internet uh, safety and responsibility, uh, bullying prevention, uh, and communicable and chronic disease. So we'll be touching on, uh, on all those topics. So uh, throughout the four years, everything gets covered. Yeah, so and again, if you have any questions, email, call, we'll be more than happy to, to answer anything and um, go from there. So have a great year and have a great day.